Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Adrian with another release for Avo. We're releasing 3.5 today and it's a freaking huge one. It's like, just look at this, look at this. It's huge. So, you know, take your time and let's uh, dive in. So we'll start from the bottom up. Um, a couple of refactors, remove dashboard path. This is a regression that we uh, uh, introduced in one of our other PRs. So now this should just fix it. You probably never saw this bug, but we just uh, fixed it behind the scenes. Remove the extended controllers with API. Again, we just introduced this, never listed, and just removed it because it didn't make sense. Conditional fill field. This is something behind the scenes where we were checking if has attribute. Uh, we were checking for an attribute inside the method. Now we extracted it so you can override it. Moving on to maintenance, a lot of uh, dependency updates. Uh, one security thing, so sign up button might reveal sensitive information. This is not necessarily a um, an AVO issue, but more of a device turbo or how turbo caches everything in the uh, in on the page. So what this basically means is you go and you navigate into your website, whichever it is, could be AVO, could be uh, something else and then you hit sign out and you hit OK and then whenever you hit back sometimes just like here it gets cached so people can see your data but again this is not a novel thing this is a turbo device turbo thing because it caches it for the browser and the browser still has it in memory we introduced a few um, a few things to further bust that cache uh, in this PR uh, so we, you know, we tried and if you need more than that, then go to Turbo and post that, post it there. Um, yeah, so definitely, or if you fix this somehow, definitely tell us and we would love to uh, add our add that fix here as well. What else? Uh, lock in Turbo Rails, dependency, upgrade to Turbo 8. Yes, this is a big one. I don't know if it's in, in why, why it's in maintenance, but no worries. So we upgraded to Turbo 8, so we have all of those goodies from Instant Click. Uh, we will be able to support morphing and uh, scroll preserving and all of the other cool things. Uh, 22 files change, so quite a few changes we needed to do to support this, but no worries, it's in there, so we love keeping up to date with the dependencies. Uh, remove keep filter panels open. Yeah, so sometimes, let me see about demo sometimes when you are applying a filter maybe here whatever not here a regular filter um a let's say we would have a ghost uh key panel open uh param here so that was not something that we wanted and we just removed it uh, we updated Puggy to the latest version, security, security, security updates, add missing breadcrumb. This is something that uh, I didn't quite like. So whenever you're in, uh, let's say, a project and then you go to a user, maybe, where is it? Uh, this was the missing breadcrumb. So you wouldn't know this was a user, Claude, and now we added that. So oh, just makes it a little bit more easier to find your information. Add plugins to the layout. This is just something behind the scenes, nothing important. Uh, use human model name. So these are bug fixes, quite a few. Use human model name when creating new polymorphic uh, association. Thank you, Ian, for this. Uh, so the create new link would just use a badly formatted thing, and now it just uses a better one. Thank you for this cool little thing. Support for numeric title such as, thank you so much, Shah um where is it so basically it wasn't supported to have um to search by things that were named as an integer and now it is it just passed a string so thank you for fixing that hide search input when our search policy is not in not uh, defined so this means that if you don't have search enabled for projects for example you don't need this because you won't be able to search so now we hide it Ensure account is an active record before generating an AVO resource. So whenever you go uh, into your generator and say Rails generate AVO 
uh, resource and you say account actually when you install an app it will try to figure out if you have a user or an account model and it will generate it for you and if you have an account module which is not a, um, a class then it would just uh, break and now it doesn't fixed routes this was a, um, a routes regression which we fixed but it was a regression actually just for rails 7.1 we're gonna open a, an issue there because uh, something is happening you could generate the uh, paths in two different ways and one way generates different paths from the other so we'll figure that out we'll, we'll post an issue there uh docs version okay thank you Seb sebastian thank you so much for this so we just updated the docs uh urls rename insta click to instant click uh we do have a way of um not this one this one we have a way to disable the instant click from hotwire 8 so it's something like turbo maybe i have it here uh let's see turbo no i don't have so it's turbo and then do something like instant click false and before and we when we released it it was like this but it's actually it actually should be like this so now this is fixed with this pr update error message in missing resource class yes somebody pointed out that um <clears throat> whenever you try to generate something uh instead of doing the right the user preference with an underscore the rate the right casing it wouldn't now it is so that's good disable turbo prefetch and belongs to a creation link so a turbo instant click integration it's not uh, perfect they are still smoothing out the rough edges and some links are downloaded twice for some reason so actually i didn't i never showed you what instant click does so i'm going to open the network and um if I click like if you if you hover for I think it's 150 milliseconds over a link it will just download it for you so it, it's going to be cached and when you click it it's just instant right so again hover 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 you see not all of them are fetched but only the ones that you stay for 150 click instant right instant and sometimes sometimes when you click when you hover over a link it downloads it and you when you click on it it downloads it all over again I don't know why whatever we just disable uh, disable that on a few uh, of our links uh, this is just a fix I introduced a bug but never released so this uh, poll saved me for on this one visible block let's see what this is uh, pa -pa -pa -pum. again okay again uh, it's uh, a fix on my bug thank you Paul for catching these select first okay selenium compatible a testing helper here has one not persisting okay so what is this what is this um <laughs> okay perfect so the has one was not persisting i think the url as far as i understood it yes 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 so has one not persisting so this is um whenever you have a has one and you click on it and then you want to click back you want to go go into the same context to the same page and it was not persisting that context and now it is so that is good uh dynamic filter error on hidden fields okay so we on the dynamic filters feature so that is our demo let's go to project so on this on these filters if you are trying to use a hidden filterable field so a field that is hidden but filterable it wouldn't work now it does uh remove pg dependency um so again dynamic the dynamic filters uses something like there's a where is it where is it where is it there's a gem actually yes the active record extend gem which allows us to i don't know i think it's filter the array feel somehow very very well and that active record extended is dependent on pg on postgres on the pg gems so if you're using sqlite you would have to install pg but not anymore and now basically this is a breaking change you can check the upgrade guide we'll talk about this in a second so now we remove that dependency from our um from our gem file because maybe you don't want that 
And then if you really want that, you can add it to your gem file and then you won't have to depend on PG. So you'll be able to use AVO and dynamic fields using um, SQLite if you want to. Next, image in file field stretched. It was stretched, it's not anymore. So that's just perfect. Uh, standard and dynamic filters don't work together. Yes, this was a, an old issue, something, it's a, it was an oversight on our end. So what was happening was that if you have, let's see, where is it? Like here on users, this is another outstanding thing that we need to fix at some point. If you have regular standard filters and dynamic filters, they have two buttons. You can uh, work around this through the initializer. Uh, so you go here and initializer and say, always expand it through. So, and then this button will not show up and you'll always have this bar. So you'll be able to use both of them. But what was happening was, Whenever you you would use the regular the standard fields, it will use it would use the filters param key, and then if you add a filter here, let's say this one and apply, it will it would use the same filters key. So basically, you couldn't use the dynamic filters and the standard filters. But now in this release, uh, you can do that, and there's a breaking change. Of course, if you ever generated only if you ever generated routes or like paths or links using the filters uh, and some of you did some of you didn't what happened was the standard filters are now are not using the filters param but are using the encoded filters right so go give this a read you'll know what to do so change the filters to encoded filters for the standard filters these ones cool Updated default client authorization to nil again because we were defaulting. We support Pundit by default as authorization client. Uh, whenever you would install, if you use like action policy or can can can, you would also have to use Pundit. You you would also have to have Pundit in the gem file. Now what we do is we are defaulting to nil, so now you don't have to do that. So you can use action policy or can 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 without having that other uh, one in the um, um, the other Pundit gem in your gem file. Double download action, yep. So this was an issue that um, was, so what was happening was, let's go and find an action. You would use this one, run, and then you would use it again, and it would not work. Maybe it will do it, it will not work here. So dummy, and then again, uh, no, okay, whatever. When you do a download, it would just break and wouldn't work. But now it does as it should, so that's perfect. Remove duplicate create method. Okay, this was a refactor on our end where I think, yes, we were saving the record twice after we were applying the association logic and oversight on our end. That might lead to some false um, validation errors to, on, on, on your end. So if you ever you know hit a save, and you, uh, the, the record would be saved okay, but this would be a red notice saying, oh no, something happened, but actually the record saved, it was because of that double save um, action, but now it should work properly. Get two param instead of ID. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So we have this preview and it uses uh, turbo frames to load some content, some preview content for your records and before it was using the ID, so if you if I click, it was using the like the open ID. But if you're using something like friendly ID or hash IDs or prefixed IDs, maybe you don't want to expose this to the user. So now we don't. It will still it will use that uh, hash ID and um, or friendly ID or whatever hidden ID you have. So that's just a little bit better for security as well. Resource on action handle. We were passing the resource wrong in actions, and sometimes that gave some uh, provided some issues. Now it's all good, no worries. Action link arguments compact params. Again, this is something that we're not exposing a an empty param to the uh, URL. Uh, of update task. This is a fix. Now you can go and uh, hit a bundle of update. Actually, it's gem. You can do. Uh, Rails, uh, where is it? Avo update, and it should update uh, everything for you. So it will run actually uh, bundle uh, update Avo advanced or Avo pro or just Avo. So it's a little bit easier. 
Next, uh, remove field translations and resource translation. Uh, I think we had a few translation fields uh, somewhere hard coded just for our uh, purposes, like the field translations for file and people, but uh, we actually don't want that to be shipped to the production website, so we remove those. Tags with cu custom tailwind integration. Okay, the last bug fix. We're close, we're close. Okay, so we reverted tagify the tagify update from the panda bot because somehow the tags weren't being stripped properly whatever we'll figure it out and we'll update it so nothing for you to worry about this wasn't released Whew, i feel we went uh, pretty pretty quick okay let's talk about the features so uh keep query params uh, while searching it's exactly that now whenever you go let's see course if you have search okay now we do hey uh hi and we try to search something it will it will pass these params to the search and you'll have access to those in your params object so now params of hey equals to hi okay so this is a cool little improvement. It, it will enable you to control the, the whole flow even uh, more. Action name as proc, just like it is. The action names, so let's say dummy action, where is it? Dummy action, the name takes a proc. Before it would just take a string, but now it takes a proc. So this is just perfect. You can further customize that. Add default URL support, uh, default URL option support. Um, yeah, so we did some um, some work around multi-tenancy. I know all of you guys want to hear more about how we do multi-tenancy and how Avo supports multi-tenancy, and I will show you. Uh, and this is just one of the steps that that we did. We actually posted. So if you if you're going to go here and multi-tenancy, so under customize Avo, you'll find a a guide about how to do that i will shoot a video as well to show you guys what what happens but um it's uh i'm just gonna send you to this guy to, to to check it out so what does this feature do default url options i don't know if you know but if you go to application controller and you go to default url options whatever you add here and i'm, I'm gonna do uh whatever you turn here resolve actually i'm just gonna return super for now just to show you what happens so now i'm gonna say hey hi and i'm gonna hit enter and everything is going to if i hit create new course you'll check out the link here that it doesn't have any params but if i return uh he hello again and i'm gonna go back and create new course it's going to append that hello again param there. So basically, what, whichever link I click, wherever I go, it's going to append that. Okay, cool. So how does this help with multi-tenancy and, and other things? So this helps by uh, doing something. If you're ever mounting uh, AVO under a multi-tenancy path. So for example, it's going to be, where is it? Tenant. I don't have it here. So it's Mount Ev uh, Avo, but you can do things like what is it? Scope, and you can say slash tenant slash tenant ID and do and Mount Avo under here. And then you'll do you'll be able to do something like tenant slash foo slash admin. Let's see if this works. Uh, okay, so it's missing the tenant ID basically because it's it's expecting a tenant id param but some of the paths that are inside avo they don't have it but now i'm just gonna um, revert this okay pam, 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 okay and now if i hit refresh it will give me the same error and now if i go into initializer and say where is it where is it uh default url options and i'm just gonna pass tenant id this will instruct the application controller to always append the tenant id so tenant id will never be here it's not going to appear here but it's actually going to be this foo variable here so now if i hit enter of course something is wrong but you know if i refresh the web the, the server 
come on, come on, come on. It's going to be, uh, it's going to work. So basically what this happens, it, it's telling the application, it's telling Avo and its application controller, like, hey, forward the tenant ID over, right? So forward it to all of the uh, other paths. So they have it. See, now it works. And now you can fetch this. If I go into footer, for example, let's see this one. Uh, and I just output this really quick. Params of tenant ID. Okay, okay, okay. And now you can see it here, it's foo. Basically, it just takes this and puts it here. How you can use that in multi-tenancy? I invite you to check out this guide and wait for the video and you'll be able to set up your tenant in no time. So this is what this feature does. Next up, um, load concerns. Okay, this is again something for multi-tenancy, which we reverted. So this wasn't a concern of AVO. You can still do that with include and, and extend, uh, with include and prepend, but no worries. I'm, I'm gonna talk about that in multi-tenancy, I think. Uh, enable showing distribution on columns and index. So thank you so much, Prichu. Um, this is super, super cool. So I've been wanting to do this for a long, long time. So what this happens, uh, what this does enables is showing the distribution on columns. So that's basically doing like a distinct call on a column. So if I go to projects here, you'll notice some of them have this new icon, which when I click it, it will show me the distribution. So basically, 12 of them have been canceled, discovery 11, on hold done. So I basically have an idea of what this field does, what, what's in the database for me, right? So it's really, really great. It works for a field with many, many values. Of course, some might have too many values, but whatever, you get the point. This is great for things like stage, status, status and uh, other similar things. So again, uh, Brichu, thank you so so much for doing this work. It wasn't it wasn't easy, and we you went deep. Uh, it was front end, back end, DSL. It was just amazing. Thank you for uh, all of the work. Um, next, uh, add tip tap as a, what you see is what you get. Again, amazing work by Olivier. Thank you so much, Olivier, for making this possible. Again, this is something that I wanted to do for a long, long time, but you know, it wasn't the most priority thing. We have tricks, it's not perfect. We all know that, but it was okay. But tip tap, now this is the initial iteration. This is amazing. Thank you for, again, going deep with JavaScript and everything uh, and figuring out uh, uh, all, of the, all of the things that we, um, we needed. So now I think if I go, oops, if I go to products, I'll be able to see the, um, yep, the new, this is not tricks, this is tip tap and it looks almost the same. It doesn't do too, too many things extra but from tricks right now, but it's the first, the initial iteration. So it won't do um, active storage integration yet, no file upload. This is something that we'll tackle along the way. Uh, but again, the initial iteration is here, we have it. Now we can update, we can add more things to it because tip tap is very, very uh, modern. So. Thank you, Olivier, for doing this. Next is reorder by drag and drop. Uh, I know it says Adrian the dev here, but it's not mine. Um, this was, uh, most of the work was done by Roland. Uh, he's not even mentioned in this PR, the, the tragedy. So yeah, this is, this is Roland right here. Um, thank you for all the work. Um, it does exactly that, reorder by drag and drop. I don't think I have it right now to demo it for you, but I will. Uh, I think we have documentation on this. So let's see, drag and drop. Uh, where is it? Code, no, it's not like this. Uh, reorder, uh, order, records are running, okay. And now rewarding you rewarder using drag and drop. It's still in beta and might have some issues. We I saw an issue on the queue right now. So uh, if it if it's broken by if it's a little bit broken, we'll release 3.5.1 and fix that. But uh, what happens is you have to add drag and drop true, and you have to add this uh, condition. This is basically telling it where you want to insert that record. Oh my God, we should have had a video. Why, why don't we have a video? So what it will allow you to do is, um, where is it? Let's do course links. <clears throat> it, it will have a new icon here, like a dragging icon, and you just click it and ch -ch -ch, drop it wherever you want. I know it's magical and uh, it's just amazing. So 
uh, we should have had it a long time ago. It proved much more difficult to in, to properly implement to hide away the complexity and uh, figure out where things are. But now it's in a really cool shape. And uh, again, thank you so much, uh, uh, Roland, for um, I don't have it. Uh, thank you so much, Roland, for putting in the the effort to um, to make this happen. So if you see this guy, go say hi and thank you for this <clears throat> and um i mentioned a few contributors so ian a uh, long-standing i think he's still contributors actually it's uh avhq slash contributors i think um he's uh in the top yeah still in, in the top with 18 commits so again it's not a race but if you want to be in the top you just have to put in the work uh thank you ian thank you olivier sebastian and uh Breach you and of course uh, thank you Sha for your uh, contributions uh, and of course thanks Paul and Gabriel uh, I think I, I talked about Gabriel he's a junior developer starting out with uh, with Avo uh, he's doing part time work he's doing great great work he's learning the ropes and uh, we hope to have him as a full time um, full time team member very very soon. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the breaking changes in the upgrade guide. So everything um, that I'm, I talked to you today about was the upgrade from 3.4.0 to 3.5.0. Okay, so we had a few other um, releases in, in the meantime, but you'll find everything here. So uh, turbo configuration, we talked about this instant click. So that in, in 3.4.2, it was instant click without a, an underscore. Now it's with one. Uh, basic filters URL now they change from filters to encoded filters active record extend uh, you have to add it to your gem file we talked about this multiple action flocks yes so because we did uh, some work on actions we had I don't think we have this documented actions overview or direct navigate to action so yes we have it so it's from 3.4.2 so now you can navigate actually you could do that before uh navigate from one action to another um i don't think i have it with me maybe i have it to, to demo let's see navigate to action pre-update what is it city pre-update okay let's try this one so cities again update let's do pre-update so we go select one update so this is one action uh whatever name and then run and then another action pops up with the arguments for the first one hey and you run run and then this should be updated i think yes hey so now you see you can jump from one action to another and because we changed a few things behind the scene and we so we were tackling actions uh and form submissions Sometimes like as turbo streams, sometimes as form submissions. Now they are only turbo streams to help us do all of these uh, naughty things. And you could navigate from one action to another using redirect redirect too. But now you have this cool nifty navigate action uh, method where we have it documented here. So you tell it, okay, navigate to this action and then give it this these arguments. And then the next action will have those arguments in there. Isn't that just cool? We think it is, so I, I don't know. If you don't think it is, that, that's just fine. Just let us know. But if you think it's cool, let us know anyway. Um, cool. The link arguments method, what is this? Okay, yeah, perfect. We told you that we did some work on actions. So before we would pass argument, we told you like when you want to pass arguments, just base encode them and encrypt them and whatever. And, and then we'll ha we'll, you will just send them through the URL. But now we do that for you. So whenever you say, okay, the link arguments, actually, yeah, from the, whenever you want to add some arguments, you just add them as a hash and we will encrypt them and encode them for you. So this is for when you want to generate an a link to an action so let's say again where were we uh, let's say you are somewhere in a resource tool or somewhere in i don't know in an, at the edit view or whatever and you have want to have an, a link here or a resource in a tool or somewhere a link that would open an action right and you don't want to do this you want to open an action and this is actually you can see that uh, in uh, in action and here so basically 
uh, it's not exactly the same thing but again um, basically if you have a, if you want to have an, a link here and you click this and you actually open an action you could do this using the uh, where is it where is it uh, the link arguments method you have the documentation um, we should link it here but we have the documentation action link here and now we encrypt it for you you don't have to encrypt it that's good um, invisibility blocks again I told you that we did some work uh, in the background we weren't assigning something properly and now you may notice that the resource director is nil on some visibility blocks this might be something that will change we want to we'll see this so if you if you are in a visibility block and you're using you want to check the record for something and it's nil um, just you know shoot us a message it should not be nil anymore we want to update the API to uh, to be nice and fluffy okay cool now I want to talk a little bit about our Q1 goals and milestones I don't want to say promises because they're not promises they're a little bit maybe there are there are promises there are milestones we want to do these um, and you might see this is uh, this has advanced to exactly zero percent so that's not very and we don't have a lot of time for it but we do have our reasons why we haven't uh, done too much uh, um, too much work on them so let's take them one at one of the time uh, DX improvements this means uh, uh, having some some a few other you know tasks uh, but basically it means having a linter having something to tell you that hey uh whatever what is it let's check uh, the user resource and say something like hey you should not add a field um a name as text you should not add a field outside the fields method right or you must have a main panel if you're using sidebar or whatever so give you some kind of feedback about the operations you're doing on the avo configuration files and we have done some work on that we, I have created the linter that uses prism and I have added, you know, it's a proof of concept thing. Uh, actually, where is it? I think we have a, yeah, our linter package. It works, but now I noticed that uh, Rubocop has added support, experimental support for prism. So now I have to get back on the wagon and check how Rubocop does it because it's not, you know, I don't want to rebuild Rubocop. I don't want to rebuild all the Rubocop tooling. If we can make a set of rules like a plugin for Rubocop to do that for us that would be just amazing so uh, again we're gonna pause this for uh, just a second and then everything like LSP becomes easier because we're doing it through Rubocop and GitHub Actions and every other thing so this is why the, the DX improvements is a little bit on pause because we need to check that out theming okay this is another cool one i know everybody's expecting a dark mode and expecting theming and i want it too and i worked on it i have it where is it i think i have a pr open or it's not a pr or it is a pr where is it yes it is a pr and it's working ish so it's it does the switching light dark and auto uh but i have started a pr to do some theming as well so where I want to go is so where I want to go is getting to something like this so I when I saw this this was just this just blew my mind this is something that I want to to support something I want to support for Avo so we have light mode and dark mode right and then you can go and customize the neutral color, which is basically the backgrounds, right? You can customize those. And then you can customize the accent color. And this is this is just for dark mode. Uh, actually, the neutral color is just for dark mode, but the accent color is for... Uh, so see, now everything is purple, is uh, orange. And now everything is beige and everything is blue, right? And everything you know if you hit this with another blue and then this will be blue or if you, if you hit it with orange again so it just works like this and then you can do things like okay i want this to be more rounded or i want it to be no rounded right and this would affect all of the inputs and 
everything else you want to make it less or full or whatever and then you can say okay i want to have it more margins or less margins right and then you want to have more density or less density okay so see how this system falls into place and yeah it's this is not easy this is cool this is really really cool and i think this is really really useful as well i don't want to this this is not the play thing we want to build but enable you to you know by configuration say okay i want a theme and i want it to look like this and to be a little bit more rounded than these colors and then the, the the density and then the spacing and padding so basically you can give avo a more uh you know whatever look you want to give it all right so it's like the next iteration for theming or branding if you may but that being said where is it theming 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 ah uh, that being said uh the tailwind guys did something super cool they announced the tailwind version 4 and they have a lot of goodies a lot of cool things but one of the things that they announced is configuration through css variables so this is huge you won't have to have what is it tailwind tailwind preset you won't have to have this full configuration with uh, defining new colors, defining the widths and the whatever. You just define everything through CSS variables. And this is really cool because you can, I think you will be able to do a lot of things. They moved a lot of things from compile time, which we with Avo do, we compile the assets for you. They moved it to the um, browser time, what do you call it? The runtime, right? So you'll be able to, to, to change some of these things live. And because of that, and because of this being a theming feature and you we want to use CSS variables to theme things, I think we should wait uh, until later this year. So V4 from Tailwind CSS is going to become to come later this year. Now, this means that Avo theming and Avo dark mode is going to be coming later this year as well. We'll probably try to push some you know some changes from the first beta maybe we'll see how that goes uh from the first tailwind v4 beta to, to play around with that uh but doing the dark mode and doing the theming uh, means we need to change some uh files as well some um some html files as well and we i would don't want to push like one change and one pr to change the files the html files the markup for dark mode and then do it again for the v4 uh, or do it again for the theming because it, again it's it's a lot of friction if you expand uh, if you um, ejected some component from your from avo and you took over the markup that might might get broken and i don't want you to go and fix conflicts between okay we added this dark mode uh, class and you didn't where does it fit because this goes against what avo is this is configuration first that this helps you you know do a bundle update and have everything configured everything updated for you and you have all the the, the cool features that we launched you have them with the bundle update you know we don't want to do the conflict thing and yeah so this means we will push dark mode and theming to v uh, to when tailwind css releases v4 or at least a beta yeah so again um a little bit of wait time on that um what is it this is developer experience uh, audit logs this is uh, something that we have a pr on we have a new uh, gem uh it works great it works great with paper trail and with audited it can do um undos or what do you call one of them calls it an undo another one says calls it a restore or something else they use different strategies we talk about those in our documentation so that's this is uh like i think it's 60 70 percent done uh still uh, falls on me to do some designy work on those it's not just adding the paper trail or the audited gem it does so much more to give you context in into what what happened uh avo context so yeah this is really cool it's going to be the first enterprise feature so if you're you know looking for if you're an enterprise looking for that feature yes definitely give us a call uh, record versioning again this goes into audit logs uh, resource adapters this is something that Paul restarted from this exploration I had uh, and again this is going to allow us to use not only active record but Mongo HTTP 
plain old Ruby objects as associations, right? Uh, and then I think it will enable us to do much, much more, much more things. But this is the first thing that we, it will do. Uh, so uh, it's gonna be super, super cool. What is this? Okay, make any Ruby. Action. Okay, perfect. Um, wow. Okay, I don't know what time is it. Um, um it's still, um. Okay, so again, go check out the multi-tenancy, uh, go check out the upgrade guide, um, blah, 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 blah. what else, what else, what else. Um, I think this is pretty much it for today's release notes. What other updates uh, do we have? So yeah, I'll be leaving for Sin City Ruby, Sin City Ruby, uh, so it's March 21st, 22nd. Uh, in Las Vegas, it's a conference put on by Jason. I'll be speaking there uh, about how I built Avo as a business, how I built the business things. I'm gonna talk about the struggles, the people that who helped. I'm gonna talk about a little bit of cheat code, what, what I learned uh, along the way. And uh, I think it's gonna be a cool, cool talk. I'm gonna disclose more many things about money and everything. So. Uh, if you think this is cool, this is something that would be of interest to you, definitely check out Sin City Ruby uh, in uh, Las Vegas. I don't think they record anything, but uh, yeah. And then I'm going to go to Brazil. Um, let's see, English. Uh, it's going to be April 4th and 5th. I'm going to speak there as well. Uh, it's a, it's going to be a different kind of talk. It's going to be about... Um, internal tools and how Ruby is doing very, very well. Uh, 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 and it's gonna be about uh, internal tools and how Ruby is doing very, very well compared to other um, programming environments. Uh, so uh, if you're from Latin America, I definitely wanna see you. Now I'm gonna have stickers with me and other types of swag. So definitely come check, uh, check me out. And then uh, later, I will be at Balkan Ruby. Um, pa, 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 where is it? Where is it? Yep, build a business on open source and Ruby. So it's going to be, I think, kind of the same talk uh, as I'll do in in uh, Sin City. So it's going to be April 26th and 27th in uh, Sofia, Bulgaria. Uh, I always love going to Bulgaria. So definitely, you know, it's going to be even better now that I'm going to be there with my Ruby uh, friends. Yeah, so I think that's about it for today. It's a big, big video, big, big um, release. Um, so you see, we're still pushing features, still pushing, pushing code, we're fixing things. Uh, we do have uh, a couple of customers for tech support. So if you think you need, want more tech support, if you want it faster, definitely, uh, you know, uh, check this page out and you'll see what kind of support we we offer this helps us, you know, uh, expand. This helps us, you know, pay the bills and uh, pay our developers and you know increase the team. So definitely increase the output. Uh, we have uh, cool things uh, coming as well. We are working on a few cool features, and of course we have the Q1 promises and milestones. So definitely we're working on those. But if there's anything you think it's cool and would you'd like to, us to work on and you think this would be something that I don't want to work on, but let the AVO guys do it, uh, definitely uh, give us a shout out. Cool. So thank you so much for uh, chiming in today. Uh, and uh, I'll talk to you on uh, the channels. See ya.